All right, hello and welcome back to my RTS tutorial in Unity. Today we're going to be doing some basically more complex actions. So say like if you were wanting a unit to gather resources, you wouldn't want to have to click every time uh, they'd finish the action. You'd want them to repeat that action until you say, all right, go here, go there, whatever. So that is basically what I've done. So if uh, you'll see, we've got some resources, we've got gold, stone, iron, and trees, and the wheat. So say if I right click on there, uh, I'll right click him on the stone, the gold, you can go on the stone, you can go on the wheat, and you can go on the gold again. So we'll be able to see as uh, they'll wait at the resource to like, you know, they're gathering the resource, then they'll take it to this building that acts as a storehouse. And then once they've done that, they will return to the resource and gather more. And this basically loops infinitely until, say, I click on him and tell him to go there. So once he's finished that loop, he will then go to this location. And if I do the same for these guys, uh, yeah, they will, again, they will also do it. But if I like use, again, I've also implemented the, uh, basically, I can still use... Uh, like get units that can't gather resources, I can just send them to those, loca those locations. So even if you do right click on it, it'll just send the unit there rather than like gathering resources or not letting them go, if that makes sense. So yeah, let's have a look at how I did this. Okay, so first off, made a couple of changes to the how we command units to move method in the unit order script. So basically we're still checking if we got units selected and if we press the right mouse button, but this time we basically fire a raycast uh, to the like mouse position when it's converted to a world position. That's done here, which we use as a vector two because we only need the x and y coordinates. And basically, uh, so we fire it in the direction from the camera to the point in the world where the mouse is. Uh, it's a zero length because we're just getting literally just what's there, and that's it. Uh, and then we, if we hit something, we grab the game objects tag. Else, we just debug. Uh, should probably use a better debug. Uh, nothing hit. Uh, and then, so after we've done that, so we'll have. If we've hit something, we'll have a tag of something that we can use. And so, if this object tag is a resource, like the, uh, so all these items, so. Uh, Gold, iron, stone, iron, trees, they all have the resource tag. And where's, I'll just get the uh, wheat tag. Uh, and on the wheat tile, we also do have, uh, basically we've got a collider that's just saying this is a, a resource on one of the little bits of wheat because it's made up of multiple uh, little icons. So yeah, I'll just delete that. So basically it'll, the raycast will hit that object and it'll say, all right, we're at, we've clicked on a resource. And then it'll get the uh, tile that, that resource is on just through the generate grid, uh, grid generator get tile method, which I've already covered in one of the earlier tutorial things for the tile system. Uh, if there is a tile at that location, then we go through each of the selected units. And what we do is similar to the uh, how the uh, getting units to move to that location was where we'll get the unit master class and we'll add the component uh, component gather resources, which is a new action that I've written, which I'll explain in a minute. Uh, basically, for each unit master class, we check can we perform the action. So in this case, it'll pass uh, resource gather to the method that we had. Although this one doesn't have it because only the worker needs it. So if AC if we can do a resource gather, then we return true. So that way we'd add we'd keep this uh, action gather resources on it. But if and we'd enable it. Oh we disable it because I've made a change where we only activate a resource uh, an action when we are running it. When so when it's the uh, first item in the actions queue. If we can't do it, however, uh, so this would, be, this would be like if we weren't a worker, but there was like a hoplite or an archer in the uh, 
in the selected units. We destroy the uh, destroy the action that we just put onto the object, and then we would just say, "All right, we just want to move normally to that location." But I have uh, moved uh, the move unit to location into its own separate function, just for simplicity's sake, because we're going to end up repeating it a lot. Because it kind of works as a default. Like if we can't do an action, then we're just going to move there. Uh, sorry. So this is basically the same. So we pass in a unit that we are wanting to move and a position that we want it to move to. And we send that all in, and it's basically the same. And we've also changed up the uh, original code we had to move. So we've not hit a resource, so we basically just call this method. We go for each of the selected uh, each of the selected units and call this move to location of where the mouse was in the world. And we convert that to a well point from the screen coordinates. And uh, yeah, uh, Everyone else on this? Not in this one. So next class action gather resources. All right. So for the action, uh, it's a bit more complex than the actual just moving to a location action, but we'll get through it. So first off, we've got the position of the resource. We've got how long we're going to stay at the resource for, and the position of where we need to uh, drop it off, basically. Uh, this is done by all set by the initialized location, where. We're saying it's a multi-part action, which is a new boolean we've added to the action scripts, uh, which is, I can search for it first. Yeah, I'll just show you that. So I've added a multi-part action. This is basically saying this action is gonna need to be called every frame rather than just once. So that is used uh, in the Q monitor here. So you can see, so if the current action is a multi-part action, then we call it every frame. Otherwise, we wouldn't, basically. Uh, there was one more thing, because I changed up the... Uh, basically, since we're disabling actions once we've added them, because it was messing about with the uh, queue by not doing that, so I've added that in. So basically, uh, where is the Q unit masterclass? I'll find it in a second. There it is. So basically, once an action is the first element in the actions queue, then we just enable it when we start it, basically. So that is what we do. And now back to the action gather resource. So we've done these three. Uh, basically, we have a couple of public rules uh, to define what state the action is in. So. We've got a state, we're moving to the resource, we're gathering the resource, we're moving to the storehouse, and we're storing the resource. And we have a loop to say whether once we've reached the stored resource stage, this loop says, all right, do we want to repeat this action? So do we want to go and get more resources? Or do we have another action in the queue to go and do? So we'd stop doing this action. And yeah, so this, so first off, let's do action, basically. And oh, uh, these are just basically booleans to display in the inspector when we're at the resource and when we're at the storehouse. So they are not really used anywhere aside from here. Just they're just like for debugging purposes. That I was using them for. Well, so first off, we've got the do action method, which is called every frame since we are a, a multi-part action. So first off, if we're not at the resource, which is basically uh, vector two dot distance. We use vector two because uh, right. I'll show you. Uh, there was a problem with clicking on uh, units when I didn't have this in. Uh, so basically, I've converted all the vector three dot distance to use vector two. So if you look here, if we go out of the two D view, sorry, we can see in three D that uh, units are on minus two, and resources are on minus one so basically since there's i don't think there's any way to like define priority of colliders when you're using 2d physics or something if there is please tell me but basically to get around that uh when we're clicking it'll always uh if there's a worker it'll select that but if there isn't it'll basically go to the resource 
and that was my idea because basically before I implemented that, there was the issue where I'd click on a unit and it'd be at the resource and I wouldn't be able to select it. And that was a problem. So by changing all its effect, all this to vector two, so uh, it, basically we use vector two dot distance from my position. We just use the X and Y of the vector three and the position of the storehouse or the position of the resource. Uh, that is basically what we use to get at. And also for the unit movement, uh, we've got, we convert again, the vector three dot positions to vector twos, just by you get it grabbing the X and Y coordinates. And we use vector two dot distance. But since we, I don't think we can use a vector two in a translate, transform dot translate. So we have to convert it back to a vector three, which kind of doesn't make sense. No, we don't convert it to a vector two. The, Basically, we just set the Z to zero, so we don't move any way on the Z axis, we just move on the X and Y. That's basically what I'm getting at. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So yeah, for at resource, we basically get the distance between the unit that the action is on and where the, the resource unit is wanting to go to, as a vector two, and we set moving to resource to be true if we are less than uh, two units uh, units away which basically says, all right, we've reached the resource. So uh, move to resource basically just uh, sets the unit movement script to move to the resource location, which was initialized in initialized location here. And it's, uh, the storehouse is just a temporary thing until we've implemented buildings properly. So basically it'll just find the only building in the scene, which is uh, basically that, you know, simple enough. Because I want to redo uh, buildings properly, because we'll have to integrate them with workers. Uh, yeah. So once we are at the resource, and we have gathered the resource, but but we sorry, if we are at the resource and we've not gathered the resource, we will basically just uh, count down the resource timer until it's less than zero, and then when it reaches zero, we've gathered the resource and we reset the timer to five seconds. Then, since we've gathered the resource, but if we, so, if we've gathered the resource, we're not at the storehouse. We'll move to the storehouse. So, at the storehouse, basically the same as at resource, but it uses the building location instead of the resource that you clicked on. Uh, move to the storehouse. We again just move to the storehouse. And once we're at the storehouse, then we'll store the resources. So this basically calls uh, store resources. Uh, We'll eventually add some kind of code to like have a specific resource uh, like value increased by this. But for now, we just check the we get the unit mass class off this object and we check how many elements are in the actions queue. And if there are more than one action is if there is more than one action, then it's like, OK, the player has clicked. Uh, clicked on another action they want us to do something else so we'll go and do that but if there isn't so if there is just one action in the queue which will be this then we'll say all right we want to loop this we want to loop because we've not got a new order so we'll just keep doing this one and if it's false then it's false because we use uh basically we invert the action forget action is complete so if we're not ones to loop then we're saying that the action is complete but if we do want to loop, it will set it to true, but it will return false if get action is complete because we want to loop so the action isn't complete. And uh, then we reset action, which basically just sets all these uh, status bools to false. And it will then on the next call of the do action, we'll be like, all right, we're not at the resource and we're not moving to the resource and the moving to resource is false. So we'll move to the resource again and it will set the unit to move to whatever you clicked on. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is basically the final product of what we implemented. We've got actions where it will just loop around until the player selects something else for the user to do. And likewise, if we can't perform an action, then we just switch to the default of just moving to the location where you've clicked. And we can, like, these units will repeat the action until you give them another order. So if we just select all of them and right click over here, as soon as these guys are done gathering their resources, they will, uh, 
like stop basically and do that action and then they don't repeat the action anymore so yeah uh just watching and all that like comment subscribe go play my stuff on itch.io it's loud and quiet which still working on uh almost done with those new fbi cutscene things so i'll be able to actually go back to proper development uh the procedurally generated roguelikes coming on nicely actually and we'll probably have something playable in a couple of weeks so i'll be able to show you that uh what else have I been doing? I did some uh, speed paint, actually. I have a little trenchy scene, which you can have a look at. Uh, it was the last video I put up, so go check out that. Uh, go buy all my shit and sit. Yeah, stuff, yeah. Keep me eating and stuff. So yeah, just watching. Bye.